Hello and welcome to Proto Balls Talk. I'm Proto Met. This is my recycle balls, and I have the high ground. You missed! <laughs> Just like an Anakin. But today we're not talking about Star Wars. No, no we're not. No, we're... instead we're talking about something Warner Brothers related. Dude, this has an 86 on Rotten Tomatoes. That's impressive. Just 86? Wow. Just 86. <laughs> Just, uh, whoa! Considering what we're watching is uh, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. Woo! <laughs> Woo! The best, the best of them, frankly. I don't, there's no debate. Nope. <laughs> not not yet. That, that is just scientific fact. <laughs> 86 on Rotten Tomatoes, which for a Scooby-Doo movie is impressive, I will, I will say. Because I'm pretty sure most other Scooby-Doo movies would not even get a rating in yeah, this. Yeah, they, they do not even compare. I've seen most of them. In fact, I watched the uh, one with Batman last night. Yeah? That one was okay. It's no Zombie Island. And it's not, uh... Never mind. I don't want to... I don't want to get myself angry. I don't want my... I don't want my... I haven't even seen that one yet, so... <laughs> I, just... Yeah. You know the one I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> I... God. <laughs> two, de two decades after the film's release, Warner Brothers Animation developed the sequel. Return to Zombie Island released in 2019. Fucking trash. So, anyways, um, yeah, uh, Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. It's got a bit of a different cast. Uh, no, 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 Scrappy. Thank God. Scrap Scrappy doing this movie would have ruined it. Yeah. Flat out. And I. Flat I, out ruined it. And I continually say this. I don't mind Scrappy Doo. <laughs> but he he has he has no business being anywhere near this. And thank God he isn't. <laughs> This uh, movie came out in the late 90s, 19... and after quite a bit of a drought for the Scooby-Doo franchise. What was it? Uh, Pup Named Scooby-Doo came out in 89? 89, early 90s. The, l the last Scooby-Doo thing before Zombie Island was technically Arabian Nights, and that just happened to star that was a... Scooby. Wasn't that, that, was a, that was a telespecial, wasn't it? Kind of counts. <laughs> I mean, if we're counting the Hanna-Barbera Hanna Top Ten, or All-Star Ten movies... I, but those are actually telemovies. This one, that, that one was just sort of a tele-special. It's not bad, actually. I, I know, I remember, I've seen it. But, uh, big, big differences with this movie is it has different cast. Almost an entirely di new cast, save for Frank Welker. Who is in fucking everything, so obviously. Yeah, but, uh... Uh, Don Messick had unfortunately passed away before production of the movie. No, just as production. Ju just as production was started. going to do. So he, w he was on board for this movie, but, you know. I say this. As much as iconic as Don Messick, Don Messick's voice for Scooby-Doo is, I can't see it working the, the, way, it, the way it did in this movie. I think Scott Enos did a very, very good job in uh, replacement. Then we had uh, Billy West. As, Billy West as, as Shaggy. Shaggy, and it is weird because you 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 get a hint of Fry in there. You, yeah. You, you could just barely hear Fry, Philip J. Fry from Futurama, and he would have done the next movie. He would have. He probably would have done the rest of the series if not for Futurama. P getting uh, picking up and getting as big as it did. Uh, this was the second time that B.J. Ward voiced Velma after yes. the uh, Johnny Bravo episode. Uh, I think it was Bravo Dooby Doo or something. Yes, I don't think we even talked about that. We did not talk about that, but it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. All we know is all we know is that Vel Velma has a thing for Johnny Bravo. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Uh, Mary Kay Bergman. Uh, just before her suicide. This was her last role, I believe. Uh, that was Daphne? Yes, Ugh. Daphne. Yeah. Really, uh... Really. She does a fantastic job in this movie. She's great in this movie. My God. She, she is awesome. Like, the, the entire main cast of this movie do a fantastic job. 
Uh, Casey Kasem, however, did not reprise his role. We did mention that Billy West uh, voiced Shaggy. Uh, okay, so she did it. She did Alien Invaders. Was one of her last. One okay, of her last so roles. that was. She was up to Alien Invaders, which probably makes sense because it would have been in production in late '99. So. But uh, Casey Kasem did not reprise his role as Shaggy. As oh, he yeah. Had, uh, he had uh, between. Uh, Shaggy's la- most recent appearance prior to this had uh, taken up being a vegan, <laughs> which is which is a weird spot. Yeah, which is yeah. why Billy West is doing it. Uh, I mean, if anybody who's anybody knows Shaggy for anything outside of being Scooby's friend and a coward knows that he and Scooby eat everything. everything. <laughs> and there are a couple points in this movie where. Shaggy has to eat now, non-vegan. I sh- now, I should mention there are a couple of other very famous voice actors that we will not we will not say their names yet. But uh, well, one of the one of the voice actresses is Adrienne Barbeau. Adrian Barbeau. Adrian yeah. Barbeau, who is uh, most noted as uh, John John Carpenter. Yes. No. Hold on. Let me look. I don't know. I. I, I recognize the name since it was mentioned in I think the first episode of Space yes, Lab Twenty Twenty One. Yes, she, she is she is most known as John Carpenter's wife and one of the characters from. I I most knew her as a character that's mentioned in Sea Lab Twenty Twenty One. She's also Catwoman and the voice of Ultra Woman Beth from Ultra Man: The Adventure Begins. But yeah, she yeah, but yeah, which was produced by Hanna Barbera, so it's still prescient. <laughs> but yeah, she's uh, probably most famous as Catwoman. From in the animated series of Batman. Oh, so, not, did not realize that. Yep. Yeah, you don't recognize her voice in this one because she yeah, she does a very good job with a with a Cajun accent, semi French accent. Let's go with that French American. So uh, let's uh, get into it. And as with all Scooby Doo movies, we we start off with the best way to start off a Scooby Doo movie with the end of a mystery. Woo. Woo! We get a mo- good monster chase set to great monster chase set to a good uh, cover of Scooby Doo. Where are you? Yep. And uh, no, nah, this dude, this monster is legit. <laughs> He's trying to kill him. He's trying to kill them. There's a there's a point where he throws a goddamn he throws a fucking shield at them. <laughs> like like three. Fris- Chase him off a balcony, just like shit. into a moat. <laughs> like he almost succeeds in killing Daphne, but of course, Scooby Doo happens. Scooby and the gang manage to catch the monster and unmask him as being Mr. S- Beeman, the real estate agent. It's always the real estate agent, and he was counterfeiting money, guys. Always counterfeiting money, but real estate agents <sighs> can't trust him. But, it turns out, this is a flashback. Of sorts, as Daphne is actually on a talk show talking about one of her most harrowing adventures with the gang. And it's revealed that uh, Daphne is the star of a, te- of a popular television show produced by Fred. <laughs> Daphne Blake, coast to coast. And it's basically revealed that uh, the gang have kind of gone their separate ways. Yeah. For a good while, which makes sense since the last time all of them were together was the very uh, uh, forgotten, the new Scooby Doo Mysteries, mm-hmm. <laughs> which uh, was plagued by the fact that it had Scrappy. <laughs> and the fact that, uh, despite the fact that Fred and Velma had actually made appearances in the show, they weren't in every episode and. Even fewer of those episodes did they show up together. <laughs> What's amazing is, uh, yeah, but basically, the, but those basically, there's those are not canon. It, yeah, basically, because I mean, Scrappy is nowhere to be seen. Canon is kind of sur- of a subjective thing when it comes to Scooby Doo. Yes. I mean, I like I mentioned earlier, this, I watched the I watched the movie where Batman shows up. And Batman had shown up in, like, two episodes of New Scooby-Doo Mysteries. Yeah. And the characters kind of act like it's, they're meeting him for the first time. So, 
Continuity is kind of messed up. <laughs> uh, uh, let's, let's just let's just say the original series, Scooby Doo, where are you? Is the, is the only canon thing in this movie. Because those are what that's when they're teenagers. This is a, don't mind the time skip. Just ignore it. Hand wave it away. Just ignore the it. The franchise does. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> Hey, they're fictional characters. Yeah, seriously, this is like the only only instance outside of the live action movies where I, where time passes for the yeah. characters and they seem to grow up. up. Yeah, Vel- Velma's running a bookstore, and which is very apropos. Uh, Scooby and Shaggy are working customs at an airport. <laughs> Fun fact: this is actually the first time I learned what contraband was. I'd never heard the term before. You've never heard what... I had never heard contraband before seeing this movie. Like, as a kid, or...? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I was gonna say, dude, you're like, what? <laughs> I know what contraband now is now. Right. Thanks to this movie. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... Ah, they eat all the contraband. All of it. All nope. of it. Nope. Still a couple cheese wheels left. Still, still a couple of gorgonzolas to help yourself. <laughs> Billy West, boss. Billy West's voice is very is very weird. Like it, it like you could you could see a a shaggy voice trying to get out. It's just hampered by it being his first attempt. If he had go, if he had gone on to do Witch's Ghost, I think it would have been a lot better. By, with that, a, point, with, yeah. by that point with a lot more practice. But like I like his voice. I like Billy West's version of Shaggy, and I don't know. I, I wish he did more movies of that. Instead, instead, spoiler alert. Afterwards, Scott Enos takes over as both Shaggy and Scooby. So it's another instance of a voice actor talking to themselves yes. for a good chunk. Kind yeah. of reminds me of a uh, Beast Wars. <laughs> there are so, a couple characters <laughs> that sometimes argue with each other, and they're both voiced by the same guy. <laughs> but yeah. So, uh, Fred contacts them all. He's like, hey, want to get back together for Daphne's birthday? Well, no, no, it's not Daphne's birthday. Da- Daphne has uh, was on the talk show. We forgot to mention this. It was her birthday, though. It was her birthday, but uh, she did mention on the talk show that she was interested in starting a new series in which she and Fred would travel the world in search of actual, actual ghosts, ghosts. and not guys in masks. <laughs> So Fred decides to get the band back, the gang back together, <laughs> and travel the country in search of real ghosts and stuff. Unfortunately, <laughs> hijinks ensue, and every instance of monsters and ghosts that they encounter are just guys in costumes. <laughs> I will say though, there's a fu- there's a great, great, great meta joke, <laughs> it, like. Right before they go on these hijinks, it's like Daphne brings up a box. Velma, Velma brings up a box of Scooby snacks. She's like, "Hey, I still got these." <laughs> and she's and her, Scooby and Shaggy are like, "Oh boy, oh boy!" It's like, and they're I, stale. They're stale. <laughs> like they've been stale for a while. They've been stale for a while. <laughs> Which just sort of shows you how much time has elapsed. I'm, I'm kind of glad that more recent stuff has kind of done away with Scooby Snacks. Yeah. It doesn't pop up very much. I, I think the closest that it's popped up recently would be an episode of Be Cool Scooby-Doo. Which I, I think at this... It par- it, the episode parodies the whole idea of using Scoop of using snacks for, to I think, motivate Shaggy and Scooby. I think the whole, the whole idea of Scooby Snacks is been averted and lampshaded at this point. Yeah. It's just like, oh, hey, that's a thing. Yeah. Don't even use it anymore because they don't need to. No, don't need to. They don't need, feel the need to outside of specific uh, instances. Yeah. Oh, I will say it. Uh, Sky Cycle. Ah, oh, man. God, some of their songs are amazing in this. Both, yeah. both songs that they do are amazing and they're iconic in Scooby-Doo. But yeah, so the, the whole going around the country searching for mysteries is accompanied by a musical montage, as you do. As you do, and it's rock. Like, not... 
God damn! I'm trying to remember what the song is exactly. It's a f- ghost the- is the ghost is here. Oh, it's a great song. It's great a great song. song. It's a great song. <laughs> but uh, no, it's like an actual like pu- not punk, but like hard rock song. Like an actual genuinely rock song. Not not like in the original series. Not like it's that. like I'm in love with an ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> How is that the most memorable song from that? Probably because it's in in one of the best episodes. It's in one of the... It's, yeah, it's the one with the creeper. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, what? <laughs> what? Dude, more recent stuff have uh, called back to the... Why are they using this song? This doesn't really seem to have anything to do with yeah. anything. Oh, man, dude. Pretty oh, cool. It's pretty co- good about that one. It has... Such a chase scene. Scooby Doo, where are you? Is fucking wild. Looking at it in twenty, watching it in twenty twenty. This is like, what? What? <laughs> but so, long story short, too late. They arrive in Louisiana, New Orleans, and they come across somebody who mentions a bit of supernatural happenings at the plantation island that she works on. Lena Dupree. Ooh. Lena. And she's like, oh yeah, I work on a haunted island. Moonscar Island. Mm. It's not far off. It's off in the bayou. You know, in that, in that, you know, Cajun accent. Yeah. The Louisiana. Seriously, go watch the montage. God damn, the, the montage is great. The montage is awesome. <laughs> I, f- I feel we kind of have to gloss over the montage, even though it's really, really good. It is so good. <laughs> Just for the song alone. Oh hell yeah! But everything else is pretty good. There's a there's a great there's a great bit where they're they're in a cemetery <laughs> and Shaggy has this mirror because <laughs> they're fighting a like a vampire a giant vampire bat monster and he's like ah ah because you know vampires they can't see it's like huh. <laughs> They, they, they don't reflect in mirrors. Yeah. But the, this one obviously does. Because it's a guy in a suit. It's a guy in a suit. Whoa. Like always. Who's, who's a grave robber, by the way. Should be mentioned. He's, he's a grave robber. I don't think any of the actual crimes of these guys are... Of they're, these guys never, are the... they're never explained, but this one's pretty obviously like grave robbing. Because he's hanging around in a cemetery. What the fuck? There have been other instances of so the other hanging one, around in cemeteries that like of, grave robbers. of the of the three like many segments in the montage. One it one is faking a seance, which is just dumb. The other one is probably grave robbing, most likely, definitely grave robbing. And the other ones, I I don't know. One involves a lobster monster. Oh no! There's also the other one where it's in the uh, in the uh, abandoned ferry. I, mean, I don't know what or that. A lighthouse. One, that, one of the two. Nope, it's at a ferry. Okay. And I don't know what that one's about. Well, it's not like they're explaining what the what the right. Yeah, are they're not saying what it's about. But <laughs> there's some of them that you can get. The, the the gist is that the gang are encountering mysteries. But it's always turning out to be guys in costumes, which is exact opposite of what Daphne's trying to find for her show. Huh. Air, the airport manager is voiced by the same person as another character that I'll get into. Okay? Doesn't, doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, meet Lena Dupree. She tells them about a haunted island and basically invites them to come check it out. That's a great scene where uh, Scooby and Shaggy are getting a giant sandwich. I mean, a giant fucking sandwich. It seemed pretty small for them, to be honest. Right. <laughs> but the, but the, yeah, but the, but uh, Scooby eats his entire sandwich right away, and then he steals like the insides of, <laughs> of Shaggy's sandwich. And Shaggy's like, boy, oh, that, I thought that was a lot less filling than I thought it would be. <laughs> I can't do Shaggy very well. No. But, uh, yeah, so then they, uh... So then they travel across the swamps, thanks hey, to the ferryman Jacques. Jacques, who is voiced by Jim Cummings. Oh, hell yeah. Who, uh, I watched a, watched a video the other day, and I, that makes me sad, but... Jim Cummings was not. I did not like being the terror mask in Spider House. Mm. 
He did not enjoy it one oh, bit. Oh, that is a shame. That is a shame, because he was role. great in that one, but he's just like, eh, it's a job. Mm, unfortunately, there are some people who are like that. I I know that yeah. um, uh, Hugo Weaving, who's been in a lot of movies, he voiced uh, Megatron in the live-action movies, yeah. and he just, he just didn't care. Such an iconic character, and he just didn't care. <laughs> To be fair, I wouldn't care if I had a voice. Yeah, they should have gotten Frank Walker right from the start, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, he, they, there's a guy who loves his role. So. Yeah. Oh, Tara Strong as Lena Dupree. And, uh... Tara Strong has been in friggin' everything. everything. <laughs> and if you don't know who Tara Strong is, uh, let's see here. Raven from Teen Titans. Bubbles from Powerpuff, Powerpuff Girls. Uh, she's, uh, what's... The, 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 the other baby... In uh, Rugrats, uh, Kimmy? No, Tommy's. Oh, little, Dale. Dale, Dale, and the original Rugrats. I, I figured she would. She would have been in Rugrats. Yeah, yeah, she's great. Oh yeah. She was also Rocky, the uh, uh, Rocky J Squirrel in a, hmm. in a Rocky and Bullwinkle movie. So yeah, she's uh, yeah, she's in a lot of stuff. Yeah. She oh she was also Paws in Metal Gear. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I never played that those games. The the Peace Walker ones. Yeah, but yeah, the, I, mean, I have the whole series. I just uh, it's finding the time to actually get to get through all those movies. She's Harley Quinn as well in the Arkham series. Yep. Well, that, she, I, basically, I, I think she takes over from uh, uh, whoever was voicing her originally in I don't, I Arkham don't. City onward. I think. <laughs> I, I know that they got the uh, got Harley's original voice actor right. for Ar for Asylum. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Tara Strong's been in everything. She's kind of a voice acting giant in America, at least. Oh yeah. And so they're traveling through the swamp areas to get to this uh, to get to Moonscar Island. Long story short, Shaggy and Scooby fall in the water, and they're chased by alligators. Oh no. Oh no. And they're uh, luckily saved by a... Luke Skywalker! Luke Skywalker! I mean, Snake Bite Scruggs. Yeah. Luke Skywalker! Luke Skywalker! Mark Hamill is... Mark the... Hamill. Mark Hamill, who, who is also... voices Joker in Batman in, the Animated in, Series. In, yeah. Oh, we tied it back to Harley. I wasn't... I didn't think we'd actually do, pull that off, but then I remembered. <laughs> yeah, and he does a... Yeah, he's that and the airport manager. So, Yeah. I, oh, yes. for, I, for, I forgot this character existed until I rewatched it earlier darn, this year. Darn tourists. And then I was like, holy shit, that's Mark Hamill. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Like, you don't, you can't tell at first, but, like, the more you listen closely, you, you're like, ah, oh, that's Mark Hamill. Cool. I am really glad that he was able to get a voice acting career. So and he's it, known for stuff beyond Luke Skywalker. Right. I mean, that will always be his most famous role. No, he's, 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 he's a fantastic he's Joker. He's basically known for two things. Being Luke Skywalker and being the Joker. <laughs> and that's... I mean, as far as characters go, you can't ask for two more polar opposite characters than that. <laughs> uh, he was also a lead villain in Avatar, The Last Airbender. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. He was also that guy. Have you ever seen that show? I, I know the character you're talking oh, about. you should I, check it I out. I can't remember... What his name was. So yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, they're saved by Snake Bites Grugs and He he's a dude who's who's trying to hunt this huge catfish. Big Mona. Darn tourists. You scared Big Mona away. And he's see. he's hunting the catfish with his pet uh boar. <laughs> uh this is my hunting pig. Uh Mojo. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. Say Mojo, I immediately think of Mojo Jojo. Mojo Jojo. <laughs> Mojo Jojo. And then I remember, holy cr oh right, Mojo Jojo's design was based on a Tokusatsu hero. <laughs> it's completely irrelevant to the conversation, but that's where my mind went to right there. Also, cats. That's another thing that needs to be mentioned, cats. I've never seen the movie. Or I the have, Broadway show. I haven't seen the Broadway show either, but apparently this island is full of them. Yeah. Not the DVDs or, or like the actors and the musical actual cats. Yeah, <laughs> I, I felt like, I felt like we needed to make that distinction here. 
It would have been a, it would have been a very weird movie. God, look at all these DVDs of cats. But so yeah, the mis- mystery incorporated make it to Moonscar Island, encounter a bunch of cats, and are introduced to the uh, Simone Lenoir, uh, the owner of the plantation, <laughs> voiced by Adrienne Barbeau. So yeah. There you go. That's where she's from. It should also be mentioned that this plantation... Uh, is a pepper be- plantation? With some pretty hot peppers. Oh, the so- hottest Something that Louisiana. Tank might, w- might want to try if they were real. <laughs> Moonscar-, Moonscar peppers. Hold on. Hold on. Keep going. I think at some point... I, th- I think it's Lena who explains that uh, the place... That uh, the place is haunted by, like, the ghosts of pirates. <laughs> Specifically, Morgan Moonscar, the uh, py- a, a dangerous and legendary pirate who once called the island his headquarters. And they say his ghost still haunts the place. It's later revealed there's a lot more to this island than they advertised. <laughs> It's a po- uh, 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 earlier in the movie it's established a lot of people have gone missing yes here, here. just adding to the whole mystique of the haunted island so of course Daphne is all up for this and they pretty much immediately start encountering some spooky weird, shit <laughs> like uh, writing on the wall midway through a conversation that's being filmed of course uh, Fred made some weird editing just Automatically God damn. on Daphne's Look, face. And hand wave it off because that is arguably <laughs> I the most. You gotta hand wave that off because that's <laughs> arguably the most annoying part of this part of this uh, of this movie. For for context, uh, in the film, the we get uh, Fred filming Daphne as she's talking to Simone and ex- talking about the the legend of the ghost of the haunted island or whatever, and then. Then in the film, there's a, a close-up of Daphne's face as a gust of wind flows by. She gets annoyed. We get we zoom back out, and all of a sudden there are, there's writing on the walls. And when they go back to replay the footage on the camera, they just replay the footage from the movie proper. <laughs> uh, there's a great joke. There's a great joke in this scene. Uh, Daphne. It, you know, is like, oh boy, oh boy, and Velma starts levitating, and yeah, and, and she she starts going higher and higher in the air, and Daphne, a oh, bundle of joy that she is, this just keeps getting better and better. And Vel, 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 Velma's is uh, not from where her, uh, maybe from where you're standing. <laughs> Bearing in mind, Velma still has a pretty short skirt. That's a, As she always has. That's a that's a pretty adult joke right there <laughs> for a kid's movie. But the long story short is apparently there's a ghost trying to tell them to get out and trying to make its presence known. In fact, they actually go back at at the footage of the, of what was being filmed and actually enhance the image to spot the ghost, which is bullshit, but it's not like this is the only instance of that kind of bullshit. <laughs> I mean, just look at any any episode of CSI. Okay, now enhance. Now enhance. Now enhance. See, I can see the tattoo on that guy from a mile away. We got our killer. <laughs> There's our killer. And he's in this room. <laughs> enhance. Enhance. <laughs> at least in science fiction shows that, that sort of makes that that technology would exist. Enhance image. So you're saying CSI is science fiction? CSI is science fiction. <laughs> it's pretty fucking science. CSI is science fiction confirmed. <laughs> I mean, uh, can, have you seen some of the technology they use? <laughs> I'd say that's pretty fucking science fiction if you ask me. I mean, what is this? Autopsy shit. I, th- I doubt that even exists. What is, what is it? DNA testing. What My- is it? Microscope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back in my day, we used to we used to watch the sun, watch the sun's shadow on a time watch to see who our killer was. It always pointed to the right man. That man was always guilty, even if he said he wasn't. The, the shadows never lie. The shadows never lie. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of that. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna stick a pin in that. 
Which part? Which part? The shadow? The shadow. <laughs> okay. It'll make sense later. Okay. If you if you know what I'm referring to. Moving along. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So yeah, Daphne is excited. Uh, we get it. Velma is trying to figure out just what's going on. Shaggy and Scooby are hungry, ter- hungry and terrified, which is par for the course for them. And they have a great line that sort of lampshades this. It's uh, what, oh, uh, constantly, constantly being terrified makes us constantly hungry. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I can, yeah, yeah, that's a. It's a good one. Makes sense. They I mean, get quite sense. a bit of a workout. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's true. Speaking of Shaggy's belt buckle collection, I keep, <laughs> I keep bringing it up. That's that's not even relevant to this movie. Not even relevant. <laughs> I just I just like to I like to bring it up. Shaggy's belt buckle collection. It's a damn impressive collection, just like in Frankenstein. Yeah, but you gotta wonder if that's uh, even canon because I think that th- same thing says that his. First name is Buzz, and it's it's Norval. <laughs> it was established to be Norval well before that's <laughs> Buzz Norval. Uh, uh, no, never mind. Buzz, Buzz Shaggy Rogers. No, it's it's Norval. Nor- Rogers. Buzz Norville Shaggy Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> I, what if Buzz was just like a middle name? I don't, if I'm remembering that special correctly, but yeah. NB. It, it was NBR. Yeah. Nor- Norville Buzz Rogers. And anyway, whatever. What what are we what were we talking about? Oh, right. Hungry food. <laughs> food. Yeah, Shaggy and Scooby go out to eat and oh, Fred is also is really completely skeptical of all this. He's like, Oh, it's just some guy in a costume. <laughs> Could be what? Oh, fu- he even uh, tries to play off uh, Velma's levitating and yeah. being with wires. Ah. And Velma's like, doesn't feel like I'm on wires. <laughs> Ah, it's just wires. That's, 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 ah. <laughs> He's like, aha! And, uh, that's it. There's some guy in a, co- in a pirate costume. That we just never saw until we enhanced. In a ghost, enhanced. In a ghost pirate. Enhanced. Yeah. <laughs> in a ghost pirate costume trying to scare everyone off the island. Huh? And he gets like, he gets fucking shit on for this. They're just like, definitely is like, oh, come on. Can't you just accept that maybe, just maybe, real supernatural stuff occurs? Huh? Huh? I know every single time we've tried to uncover supernatural stuff, it's always been fake. But come on! Have you gotta faith! You gotta Don't believe. be so skeptical! You gotta believe! You I gotta, gotta believe! <laughs> I believe! You gotta believe! Uh, I feel I should mention that at some point, once Scooby was introduced to uh, Miss Lenoir... Yeah, she she was... That's why I mentioned it. Cats. She she is borderline telling them to just leave because she's got a lot of cats. (laughs) Fuck dogs. Which leads to like three three cat chases, but the second one's probably the biggest. Yeah. Yeah. You know, good old Tom and Jerry chase scene here with Scooby Doo and the cats, and at some point they end up encountering the gardener Bo. <laughs> oh, Bo's fucking pissed. Oh yeah, he's like he just was getting. Ready. I just planted those. So he is. He is. He's mean. the most. He's the most suspicious character in the movie for good reason. And he's played by um who? I know it's the same guy who voices Leonardo of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> what a luscious. Uh, dandy, dandy, dandy. It's not Rob Paulson. Cam or... Clark. There we go. There we go. Yep. Leonardo and Rocksteady and Liquid Snake in Metal Gear. Hmm. Yeah. Oh my god, I can hear it now. <laughs> yeah, now, now that you mention it, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Just give him a British accent and he's liquid snake! Oh my god! Oh! This sh- this movie has some fantastic voice actors. Oh god around. damn! <laughs> oh man! That's amazing! Alright, let's just let's just do a quick See, the more you, let's the, just do a quick rundown of famous voice actors that show up in this movie. Billy, Billy West! West. Mark Hamill, Adrian Barbeau, Frank Welker, Laura Jim St- Cummings, Kara Cl- Strong, Cam Clark. <laughs> what the hell? 
Don Messick would have been in this movie, and it would have been as... It would have been even more star-studded. Oh, yeah. God. But unfortunately, rest in there's, peace. Yeah, rest in peace. Don Messick, original voice of Scooby-Doo. I, again, I'd still say this. I don't see how his voice would have fit. It, like, I, like, his voice is iconic, but it's... Uh, I don't think it would have fit the tone of the movie. I, I will admit that uh, having watched a lot of the recent stuff with Frank Welker voicing Scooby, I can... I can... I have a hard time thinking back to how Don Messick played the role after hearing Welker for so right. long. Right, I mean, we we watched his role, but it's just like, uh, it, 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 too dopey, I think. It would have been... Probably. Too dopey. Probably. Now, it, I could, it might have worked if, he, you know, he was into the script and was just like, okay, Scooby's a lot more, a lot less dopey, a lot more just clueless. I'm sure Messick would, was, would have done a fantastic right. I'm job. I'm sure Messick would have been great. I just don't see how his... his, his his Scooby Doo's from previous would have right. his Scooby Doo voices from previous would have worked. Anyway, yeah. So they can't chase. They run into Snakebite again, who's just all pissed off. He's like, "You chased me, Mono away. That's it, Mojo. Get him." Another chase scene, and uh, Shaggy and Scooby fall into a hole. I, in fact, I think the them encountering Bo happens before the whole uh, yes, it ha- the whole kitchen scene with the ghost and the with yes, the ghost writing. It, it, also, we did uh, skip over a little bit, so before you get into where you're getting to, I want to cover the kitchen scene a right. bit more because at this point, Velma is trying to figure out the mystery of the ghost writing, and she starts scratching a bit away at the uh, paint on the wall and. Eventually just grabs a spatula and starts scraping it. And then <laughs> Simone comes in and is like, what are you doing to my wall? And Velma suddenly realizes just what she's done. Lem- she's she's Lem- scraped Lem- paint off of this wall to reveal the name of the boat of Captain Moonscar. Which Simone is like, well, yeah, it makes sense. This place is pretty old. It wouldn't be surprising if the place was made using material from the boat. I mean, this is a really old place. <laughs> We're talking 1700s here, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. This place is old. Yeah. And the it t- would have been... T- the, t- the timing of this did kind of confuse confuse you a bit while we were watching the movie. Right. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, Fre- I thought 1600s would have worked. See, okay... Simone and Lena are both French. Of French descent. They're of both of French descent, and they're most likely just straight up French. And it's 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 mentioned that the place was the, the island was like first inhabited in like the seventeen hundreds. Right. See, I my history got mixed up because for the longest time, Spain owned the Louisiana territory, right? And it wasn't until, like, I can't remember when this would have been. This would have probably been the 1760s, 1750s, before Louisiana, or before Louisiana, the entire Louisiana Territory went over to the French. I'm pretty sure that was, yeah, the Louisiana Louisiana Territory went to France, and then America bought it. Yeah, hold on. Uh... Pretty sure that would have been in the 1700s, though. Hmm. Uh, let me look it up here. Uh, so I'm confident Spain that- secretly acquired the territory from France near the end of the Seven Years' Wars of the term blah, blah, blah. was later and briefly reintroduced the terms of the Treaty of San Ildefonso. So, 1800. France got Spain. You see, that's why I was confused. Spain got... Uh, Louisiana back in the seventeen in the seventeen sixties, but Louisiana uh, Louisiana went back to the French in eighteen hundred, if that makes sense. So this still could have been a yes, it's French a, territory. It's a time. it's a very at the time of Moonscar, right? For 
300 years. I'm just, pretty you, confident, though, that this movie wasn't trying to go for historical I'm accuracy. sure it wasn't. It's just, I mean, this is a Scooby-Doo movie, after all. Oh, I'm just saying, <laughs> god damn, this... Ugh. See, I'm the hist... I like history, and I like reading about history, so it, it you know, it happens. So yeah, the, the long and short is, Velma figures out that parts of the house of the plantation are constructed using Mo Moonstar's ship. And that's an important detail for some reason. Which actually kind of lends credence to Daphne's theory that the place is haunted by Morgan Moonscar. I mean, it was his ship. <laughs> yep. Anyway, so yeah, long story short, Shaggy and Scooby fall into a giant hole. After being chased around by a boar. <laughs> and they try to climb out. And it's here we get the one of the best scenes in the entire movie. Some, like, green light spiral energy thing goes into the thing. And it's a grave, is what it is. It's a grave. It's a grave. <laughs> and uh, we, we get the one of the best, like, undead transformations I've ever seen put to film. In, in animated film, at least. Morgan Moonscar goes... It's Morgan Moonscar, by the way. Not much of a spoiler. I mean, we've been talking about the guy for, like, five yeah, minutes now. He, he fucking transforms... For his skeleton collapses, go, forms into place, and starts growing skin from the top down with clothes on it, too. Which is just... Okay. Okay, we're, it's that kind of film. <laughs> and good God, one of the best, like, zombie transformations ever. And so sh <laughs> Shaggy and Scooby are scared shitless. As you do. <laughs> As you do when you see a fucking zombie. And they're like, oh god! Oh god! A zombie aberrate right in front of them. It's like, ah! Sword and all! Yeah! <laughs> and they get the hell out of Dodge. And they run into... They run, well, into, run into Bo again. And, and of course everybody has overheard the commotion that's going on. And they're like, god, we've been hearing you screaming from the house! Yeah, they just won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Bo is pissed because yet another bad experience with these two. These two idiots. And Velma's like, what were you doing digging a hole? I'm a gardener. <laughs> <laughs> what were you digging? Elephants? <laughs> Brava. <laughs> so, yeah, he's a suspect. <laughs> I just wanted to do that. <laughs> Trying to bury my brother. <laughs> so, we got Bo as a suspect. We got Snakebite as a suspect. Simply because he's so mean-spirited. <sighs> Who could this ghost be? God damn. Dude, I know, right? It couldn't... It, it couldn't possibly be an actual ghost. <laughs> so, what do we do? When has it ever been an actual ghost and Scrappy wasn't involved? That's true. That is true. Fuck Scrappy. He doesn't belong in this movie. Let's <laughs> never mention him again for the rest of the review. Deal? No promises. Damn it. But I probably won't. <laughs> so anyway, it's, it's starting to get to night time. And so Sha 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 like Shaggy and Fred and them are like, ah, I think it's time to leave. <laughs> and Daphne is like, no, we gotta stay. It's getting night. That's the spooky time it's of the It's the spooky time. That's when the more supernatural stuff's probably gonna happen. And we can film it. <laughs> Fred. <laughs> so long story short, Simone lets them stay the night. Uh, everybody gets the rooms. Blah, blah, blah. Lena and Fred are flirting. Because Fred has kind of clearly had a bit of a thing for Lena. Oh, and Daphne first also... first meeting her, and Daphne... Gushes has a, up. <laughs> Daphne has a thing for Bo. <laughs> yeah. As you, as you do. I mean, have you seen those cheekbones? <laughs> Come on, man. And then, a ghost. A ghost. A confederate ghost! Trying to tell Scooby and Shaggy Get to... Get away! Get away! <laughs> It's like, holy shit! <laughs> so they investigate the room, and they're like, oh! Well, they, this they, mirror came from the Civil War! Well, don't oh, hey. surprise me, the, the Confederates had barracks here. Hey, da uh, uh, Daphne, you know, she, she sneezes, her, her glasses get dusty, and she's like, 
Oh, wow, I've... Daphne has glasses. Velma. <laughs> there's two. There's two female characters. I don't know how I can fuck that up. There are four female characters. <laughs> yeah, well, those two aren't regulars. Fair point. <laughs> There's two female characters, and I fuck them both up all the time. <laughs> so let's go, let's try this again. Velma investigates the back of the mirror. She sneezes. It's all dust. Oh, Scooby sneezes. It's all dust. Her gets her glasses all dusty, and she's like, "Huh? Where's my eyeglasses cleaner? Stick a pin in that." Just all I wanted to mention. Okay. Okay. It 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 comes up. It's it a, it does come up. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, they find out, oh, there was a confederate barracks here. And this was actually the point where you were getting confused. Because you thought that the confederate barracks were there before the colonists. No. I didn't say that. It's, that's what it seemed like you were saying. No. I was just... That's not what I was saying. I was just addressing a different point, and you were taking it as that. Okay, well, then I misinterpreted. Uh, Sorry. No, that's just, no, that's fine. I was... What well, I can't even remember what I was going on about now. Because I was right. <laughs> no. No, but it definitely wasn't that though. It was some some other trite, trite thing. It, it's not important. Oh, uh, I was I was probably asking about the timeline of it. Of like yeah, when what when this would have been in the Civil War. Um, I. I wouldn't know. Probably sixty-two. I thought you just meant the like the timeline in general. No, no. That, that, if you if you want to address the timeline in general, we'll cover that later. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think sixty-two. Sixty-two probably works. So anyway, Confederate ghost. Which actually, this does bring up a few questions. Oh yeah, this does bring up a few questions. Consider okay. considering the climax of the film. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about the timeline later then. <laughs> no, not the timeline. Just another thing. I, well, I want to talk about the timeline. Okay. Right. We'll talk about the timeline later. But uh, so yeah, that's a thing, Confederates. And this this movie brings up a real great irony regarding them. That uh, I will I will joke about later. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, dinner time. It's dinner time. Unfortunately, because Scooby-Doo is a dog, he's not allowed at the dinner table. He's, he's not, not even, even allowed in the house. Not after he chases the cats again. So Shaggy and Scooby are like, okay, we'll just we'll just go hang out in the mystery machine. You guys have fun. We'll be outside in the dark where the monsters are. Don't worry about us. <laughs> Oh well. So then everybody except Shaggy and Scooby eat in inside. <laughs> Corny jokes ensue. Yeah. They try the hot peppers. They're hot. They're hot. They try crawdads, which is part of the reason why Casey Kasem did not return to the role in this movie. And like, I totally understand it, dude, but come on, dude. That's really petty. Yeah. Just, come on, dude. Just swallow your pride. He probably felt kind of uh, upset over the fact that uh, Hanna-Barbera used Shaggy in a Burger King commercial after he turned vegan. So that that probably was part of it. <laughs> like, like, they didn't even consult him on it. They just had Shaggy in a Burger King commercial after he It's came. not... He voices the character, but it's not his character I know, to decide. But he, he was kind of being a... But to be fair, he had voiced every iteration of Shaggy up to yes, this point. Yes, I get this. Including hit the kid version from a pop. I get it. I know. I know. I'm just I'm just saying that marketing can do whatever they want with the character. It doesn't mean that... It doesn't make it canon. <laughs> right. I'm pretty sure Bumblebee isn't actually hanging out in Michael Bay's backyard. But there was a commercial where that was a thing. <laughs> hey, God, would that be stupid an okay commercial. It's not nearly as great as... It was, it a lot of not nearly as great as M Michael Michael Bay's Aaron Burr commercial. Got Milk commercial. I need to see this, probably. <laughs> you didn't know it was directed by Michael Bay? I don't even know which one you're talking about. It's the, it's the one where it's, it's the Got Milk commercial where the kids... 
There were a lot of Got Milk commercials. <laughs> it's the one where the kids in the museum, with, with the, the historical museum, and it's one on Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr. And he's, he's, he's eating cookies, you know, and he's, he's eating cookies, he's got a mouthful, and the guy on the radio, and there's a contest on the radio, and they're like, all right, if you can answer this question, you'll win a, you'll win two a hundred thousand dollars. Who's okay, now? I know which one yes. you're talking about. Who is the man who shot uh, Alexander Hamilton? And he's like, <laughs> all right, do you have the answer? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Glass of empty milk. <laughs> I'm sorry, we can't understand you. Have a good day. <laughs> Got milk. And yes, that was the commercial directed by Michael Bay. Oh, God. <laughs> now I remember that commercial. I need to see that commercial again. God damn. What really a refresh my memory. What a great yeah. commercial. I remember the climax for sure. But <laughs> So anyway, yeah, they eat the hot peppers. They, they go outside to get a drink of water because God they get, damn. Those. They also have some crawdads. I'll try to crowded, but that's not important. I think it is, simply because that's part of the reason why Casey Kasem wasn't in this movie. Yeah, but whatever. Who it's cares? important for that reason, if nothing else. Anyway. Also, I think that's what we get the, I we get the, we, we get We get the next best scene in the movie. <laughs> All the zombies rising from the dead. Yeah, Scooby and Shaggy run into the... <laughs> Confederate. Confederate. And... Pirate zombies. And tourist zombies. Not what? yet. Not yet. I'm pretty sure. Not yet. I'm pretty sure this is when they start. I'm nope. pretty sure this is when all the zombies nope. start. Nope. Not yet. Not yet. It's just the just the pirate. Just the pirate and confederate zombies. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. And they, they start chasing Scooby and Shaggy. And then they get in the mystery machine. And they drive off. And there's a zombie on top of it. Hit a tree. The zombie... Gets knocked off and hit runs and uh, rams into the tree. Gets back up, and uh, Scooby and Shaggy get stuck in the mud. And they're just like, "All right, fuck it, we're we're gone. We're we're getting the hell out of Dodge." What about the others? Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> the others. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah, that's that is what I was referencing. Yep. Your clock tower. Yeah. My favorite game of all time. <laughs> Specifically, the John Tron review of Clock Tower. If that is what we were referencing. It is. It is simply one of the best, <laughs> best, best early survival horror games. Pre, one of the best pre Resident Evil horror games. Why don't you wait until the end of the episode to start plugging it? No. <laughs> okay, yeah. fine. Suck its cock off for all I care. I'm getting the. You, you getting know what? The, it. You know what? I have one question. <laughs> I, I have one question for you. Do you have the time, old man? <laughs> Just like in Frankenstein. <laughs> All right. So yeah, they disappear for a while. Everybody, they run into Bo. And Bo, the lighting, you know, makes him look like a zombie. So, so, so they're even more scared shitless. Everybody goes out to go search for Shaggy. Not everybody. Lena and Simone stay behind. Lena and Simone stay behind because huh, Fred I wonder puts, why. Fred thinks it's too dangerous, wants them to stay where it's safe. So they go out into the woods of the island to search and, for Shaggy and Scooby. And they, meet up, they come across Bo. Come across Bo. <laughs> and they decide to split up, as you do in Scooby-Doo. And Daphne's like, I'll go with Bo. And, and Velma's like, I'll go with Bo. I'll go with Bo. I won't let him out of my sight. <laughs> so yeah, the, the quicksand scene, there's a quicksand scene. Uh, where... Bo, with Velma and Bo, they're talking, and Bo is kind of upset over the fact that da Velma is absolutely suspicious of him. And Velma's upset over the fact that he's absolutely suspicious. So Bo picks up a huge rock and tosses it her way to show her that there's quicksand right in her direction she was heading. Gee, <laughs> thanks, but you're still suspect. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> Oh man, Bo's great. Ah, uh, whatever. I'm trying to. Uh, never mind. 
I'm pretty sure stuff is happening with Daphne and Fred at this they point. Find, they find the van. They find the van. They find Scooby and Shaggy. And, and they find a, a thing. And then the more supernatural shit starts happening. Yeah, so they're, they're like, oh, it's it's just a guy in a suit. No. Fred's, Fred's like, oh, yeah, that's no. all right. I'll take Kazetta. Yes, I've seen the movie more than you. How can you be sure? <laughs> I know. Okay? I know. All right? So, yeah, they, they get to the van. They're, they open up, crowd ads come out, and they're like, blah, 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 blah. They're jawjacking at each other because... Oh, hey! You guess you guess you guess your girlfriend guess you guess the boys liked your girlfriend's cooking, and he's like, eh, Shaggy, eh. no, not Shaggy. Fred's like, look this, look what you've done to me. <laughs> so then Fred's like, eh, she's not my girlfriend. I just said I enjoy her kicking, her cooking. And what about Bo? What about Bo? <laughs> so anyway, yeah, they find Shaggy, they find Scooby, they find a thing, and so Fred's like, oh! That's the cheesiest looking mask I've ever seen! I'll just pull it off! <laughs> God, <laughs> God, it's stuck on your pretty... Maybe, maybe it's the gardener! No! Maybe it's the fisherman! No! no maybe, maybe it's a... Real! <laughs> Pulls the head off of the guy! <laughs> It's a zombie. It's a zombie! And he's like, like ah! he, he tries to rationalize it as being maybe animatronic, and Daphne's like, oh, come on! It's a fucking zombie! <laughs> Forgive us. For we have screamed. <laughs> and the zombie uh, puts its head back on. <laughs> And nice. I'm pretty sure by this point, a bunch of other zombies... Now, now the rest of the zombies are showing up. All the other zombies are coming out of the ground. You got... And it is a horrifying scene. Yep, you've got all you got all the tourist zombies coming out of the ground. You got the great you got the great scene where it's uh, where it's the, the I'm pretty sure there's some mobster zombies. Mobster mixed in there. mobster zombies. Nineteen forties zombies. Nineteen fifties zombies. Nineteen zombies from like all of the decades. Just all of the decades. Just yeah. rising up from like the swamps and the quicksands and underground. It's just fucking hell. This is so goddamn anime. <laughs> the oh, sequence is clearly animated by anime <laughs> animators. Like you can just look at look close enough, and you'll be like, "Holy shit, that's Japanimation." <laughs> that's Japanimation. It looks so fucking awesome. Yeah, the uh, the first three movies were done by a Japanese studio. So you there's there's parts where you could definitely see Japanimation. Not that they. Not that they stand out too much. No, they don't stand out they too much. They look fantastic. There's a few frames where it's like, that's that's, that's anime. That's, that's anime. anime. That's your panimation. <laughs> that's anime. And we get to the best. The best. Uh, also, Fred loses the camera in quicksand, by the way. He, he trips, accidentally tosses the camera into quicksand, thankfully saving their lives, but getting rid of all the evidence of, holy shit, zombies! <laughs> mm-hmm. And all the other supernatural stuff that's happening. Yeah, and then we get the best sequence in the movie. Bar none. Terror Time Again. T Terror Time Again by Sky Cycle. It is the <laughs> best song in the entire movie. The best, yeah. se best sequence in the entire movie. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> we, I, I don't... There's a, there's a bit where... Uh, okay. Let's do the Scooby and Shaggy bits first. So they... they there's a scene where they're they're running, they're running through the, the bayou, and they step on a they step on an alligator's head. That's pretty spooky. Scooby falls into quicksand and he's wrathing and shaking and it's just Shaggy's trying to find something. He grabs a snake, throws it, and a zombie taps him on the shoulder, hands him a vine. He's like, "Gee, thanks." Oh God! <laughs> Yeah, that's probably the best part of the entire sequence. <laughs> um, they get clipped by the fisherman. <sighs> by that fisherman's hook. And Shaggy and Scooby just go fucking flying. That dude, that thing has got to be, I don't know how fucking strong. He's got to be using titanium real. Good God, man. Or it could be just a cartoon and you're overthinking it. Maybe. <laughs> uh, the one Daphne and Velma bit. 
is uh, they will go to a giant tree branch and they peel it back and they, they whip it back forward at the zombies and it takes one of the zombies' the entire torso out and the, the legs just keep walking. I feel we should mention that uh, Daphne, Velma... Ve- Velma, Velma and Bo are nowhere to be seen. Well, then why was Daphne with Velma when this happened? I don't know. That's, that was, those were your words. <laughs> I don't know, man. Come on. It's, it's a whole sequence yeah. of awesomeness that, uh, we just got to remember all of it. Fred and, the, Fred and Daphne. There you go. <laughs> Kill me now. Okay. Good. Oh my god, this is awful! Oh no! What have I done? Good. Good. You've killed me! Good. Oh my goodness, this is awful! This is awful! (laughs) My cakes will burn! God damn it. (laughs) Ah! The Zelda CDI games, everyone. <laughs> Give me some. Hey. What, what was it? Give me some magic fairy dust and I'll enchant this quilt. I haven't seen all of them, so. <laughs> Sorry, Link. I'm afraid you'll have to come back when you get more money. Like I said, I haven't seen all of the cutscenes. <laughs> You just, you just let me handle the rupees. <laughs> <laughs> like the, in the anyway, <laughs> this, getting back to the topic. This, this beard way off topic. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right though. But yeah, so but at the end of the montage sequence, Daphne and Fred meet back up with Velma and Bo, and Scooby and Shaggy have gone off to who knows where into a cave. Into a cave, yes, where they find these weird dolls and just kind of made of wax and just kind of start playing with them. And then, meanwhile, with the other guys, they suddenly start experiencing weird phenomena of being thrown around. Yep. And other stuff. And it only stops when Shaggy and Scooby find a, uh, uh, come across a nest of bats and get chased away. out of the cave. Yeah. A weird, a weird coincidence. But then. They hear Lena screaming. And then we book it back to the house. They find a secret passageway under the main steps. Uh, Lena tells her that the jo- the zombies uh, took Simone and dragged, dragged her, her away. Dragged, dragged her away. I was saying dragged. You don't need to correct me. God. 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 I'm sorry. I'm re- Let me reemphasize. Dragged her I away. I said dragged. Come on. So they decide to go, go save Simone and they find this mysterious chamber and then Velmo drops the bombshells like Simone wasn't dragged away she walked away there were no drag marks on that dirt floor dirt ground what are you hiding and Simone's like ah very clever very clever okay you got us we're cat monsters (laughs) we captured you we're gonna seal your youth the great the great fucking... Uh, there's another great transformation sequence. Oh. It's when Scooby and Shaggy make it back to the ferry and Jacques is coming off the ferry and they're like, Like Jacques, are we ever glad to see you? And then he and turns I, into a cat monster. I, and Cat Jim Cummings and his great... And I am happy to see y'all here. And, and then Cat Monster. Cat Monster and it's like, Jesus Christ, movie! <laughs> so yeah... Uh, turns out Simone, Lena, and Jacques are all cat monsters that have been kidnapping people for centuries in order to steal their life forces to or- in order to sustain their immortality for their cat gods, which is actually how they got revenge on the on Moonscar and his pirates way back when, when they invaded the island and killed almost all of the colonists. By pushing them into the water. With, with the-, the alligators and crocodiles. Yeah. So, uh... This woof. movie is hardcore! This movie's dark. It's easily the darkest <laughs> Scooby-Doo movie easily. ever. Ever. <laughs> ever. Scooby-Doo 2002 had a chance. A chance of going as dark as this, and they didn't take it. And frankly, 
Why wouldn't you? <laughs> okay? This movie is well remembered for re- this and Witch's Ghost. Two of the most well uh, well remembered movies. And darkest movies. And darkest movies. For a reason. Witch's Ghost is a lot tamer. But still pretty dark. Pretty fucking dark for the implications within it. Well, meanwhile, back in the cat ritual room, uh, Lena and Simone have a... Fred, Daphne, Velma, and Bo all at at their mercy and use the wax dolls that 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 Scooby and Shaggy had found earlier to keep to hold their prisoners prisoner by revealing that they've actually been using pieces of uh, or objects that these four have owned to basically tie them to the to the voodoo the wax voodoo dolls the miss the missing eyeglass cleaner yeah that's uh that's where that wound up. Oh, by the way, they have to do it, like, every harvest moon. Yes, otherwise the cat gods will steal their immortality and just kill them. Mm-hmm. So, eventually it gets to a point where where Scooby and Shaggy manage to get away from Jacques and find their way into the underground ritual chamber in the midst of all the craziness. No, okay, this was the other thing. So, as it turns out, the zombies... They're not the bad guys! They're not the bad guys! What? A movie where the Confederates are the good guys? <laughs> oh, man! So, basic, here's what... Basic, they're not the good guys. They're not the good guys, but in this movie, they're, they're the not vic- the, they're, they're, they're not they're the, the bad guys. They're definitely the victims. Yes. So, here's basically the timeline of events. Because I want to talk about the timeline of events. Go ahead. 1700s. French colonists arrive on the island... It's not named yet. Pirates show up, led by kill. Morgan Means Moonsgar, and kill the inhabitants, except for two, Lena and Simone, who worship their cat god to get cat to become cat monsters in order to get revenge on the on the pirates. However, after they get their revenge, they realize that in order that they are now immortal, but in order to sustain their immortality, they keep having to harvest souls every harvest moon. Which begins uh, them luring people to the island, which ultimately results in the island becoming a plantation for chilies, which eventually also becomes a Confederate barracks during this during the Civil War, during which, of course, soldiers and tourists and other pe- and workers they all go missing over the years. Eventually, after that, uh, they encounter Jacques and work with him uh, to be. To bring more and more people to the island in order to harvest them every harvest moon, and so, and that's actually how Lena lured the gang yes. to the island with the intention of stealing their souls. And Jock just joined along for the ride. Yeah, it's like, cat monsters and immortality. Fuck yeah. He's easily he's easily the worst of the three though. Kinda. He just does it because he's a greedy bastard. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, Lena and Simone did it out of an out of an act of revenge, and just kind of had to deal with the consequences. And just kind of went mad. Kind of, yeah. Jacques is just straight up. I'm a fucking psychopath. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a killer. Okay. It's like if I can be a cat monster and a killer, I'm oh, fine. Also immortal. Yeah. Okay. But during during all this chaos, Scooby and Shaggy fight wind up in the ritual chamber, accidentally knock the voodoo dolls off their stands while running from both the zombies and the cat monsters. And eventually, uh, they, at one point, accidentally knock the voodoo dolls near a, a sconce that's been knocked over. Yep. Which starts to cause their friends to start melting. But they the voodoo dolls get knocked away and the melting just immediately stops. Body ho- oh, That's kind of horrific when you think By the way, it. the voodoo dolls were made using wax figures and, like, parts of the people. I, I think I was mentioning that. Mm. I, I mentioned the glasses cleaner. Yes, okay. I zoned out for a Eventually, second. Eventually, Fred manages to get his... manages to get his feet on his doll and... Velma on hers, and they work to try untie their dolls. They manage to do so, and then uh, free Bo and Daphne, and then use scraps of Lena and Simone's clothes to on the voodoo dolls to basically manipulate them. They reveal to Shaggy and Scooby the zombies 
aren't the bad guys. They're trying to help us. Which perplexes... Rather, rather, they aren't trying to help them. They're trying to scare them off the island so that they don't suffer the same fate. Thereby helping them. Yes. <laughs> also, uh, I just... Lena and Simone get their hands on... Yeah, 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 here's, here's where my thing comes in. They're confederates, right? Yeah. In the barracks. There had to be weapons. Yeah. They had to have had guns on them. Yeah. Why didn't they just shoot them? Voodoo dolls. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Also, soldiers go AWOL like all the time, probably. I guess. They probably picked the ones who were most likely to just disappear and not be cared for. Maybe. But yeah, so Lena and Simone get their hands on Shaggy and Scooby and decide, you know, fuck this. Fuck Jacques. We're just going to get hard with these two souls. They're not the best sacrifices, but they're better than nothing. Then the whole voodoo doll being used on Simone and Lena happens. Freeing, freeing, freeing Shaggy and Scooby. <laughs> I forgot Scooby's name. What the hell? <laughs> Jacques shows up and all seems lost and then the moon shifts. And it turns out it's past the time that the uh, cat monsters needed to harvest souls in order to maintain their immortality. Yep. And so... They die <laughs> fucking violently. <laughs> like, they just dissolve into dust and bones. And dusty bones. <laughs> Bone dust, if you will. And all the zombies... And it is horrifying to watch. And all the zombies uh, do too. They do too, but that's only after their souls are finally released from their cur from the curse of the island. Yep. And it's... Oh! <laughs> this is one of the dark... This is the darkest Scooby-Doo thing ever. <laughs> so at the end, it's revealed Bo is not actually a gardener. He's which actually, which does which does bring up the joke I forgot to mention, because <laughs> they're they're questioning Bo, they're questioning Simone about Bo, and she's like, well he did well she, well he did have good references. <laughs> <laughs> well, turns out Bo isn't actually here to be a gardener. He's actually a detective who's come to investigate the string of disappearances on the island. Yeah, and he kind of wound up getting caught up in all this. Uh, by chance. I mean, granted, he was lured to the island by Lena and Simone because they had intended on using him as a sacrifice. It's just Scooby and the gang also showed up within the within a decent enough time frame. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Daphne, of course, was lamenting the fact that since they lost the camera, they lost all proof that real, actual, supernatural stuff that was going on on the island, yeah, and no one will believe them, and then Bo's like, yeah, no, I'm a police detective. I'll be I believe you. It's like, okay. 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 Right. That's someone. Nobody else will believe him. And then Bo and Velma actually start to hit it off when... She learns that he's an investigator who likes detective stories. Yeah, it's real. That's a, that's a weird tw word twist, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. I would have loved if Bo was in more movies. I mean, he's just now part of a gang from now on. Just like, ah, oh, yeah, that's cool. The closest they ever did did to doing that was Hot Dog Water and Mystery Incorporated. Don't know who that is. Yeah, watch Mystery Incorporated. <laughs> No, I refuse. I've got other stuff to know to do. You've got other stuff to know. I got other stuff to know. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's worth your time. So, sorry, I was typing something, and the the thing I was typing, no, <laughs> sort of slipped out. I've got other stuff to know. I mean, <laughs> you, uh, you ever do that? Snakebite finally catches Big Mona. And, and then, then he doesn't. And then he doesn't. <laughs> the end, basically. Oh, basically a movie. Great movie. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Easily. Easily I'm, the best Scooby-Doo movie. I'm sorry that I zoned out there at the end, but it's like <laughs> there's, there's not much else to talk about. Yeah, here. once you get to the end, I mean, it's the end. <laughs> They're just wrapping stuff up. It's not super important. The bulk of the, the, bulk of the important stuff we've already gotten past... And it was fucking awesome. Uh, I would say the most important parts of the movies are uh, the movie is twenty minutes in, and about ten minutes before the finish. 
If that makes sense, yeah. And everything in between. And everything in between, yeah. Everything else is just not. And this movie, which was a directed video release, did so fantastically well that the creative. Could you, could you imagine how well this would have done if it was an actual theatrical release? It no. probably would have made a lot of money. Probably. I mean, it did make a lot of money as a it, director. Yeah, as a director video. So so much so that the creative team behind this were actually kept on for for a few more movies. They were kept on, what was it, Intel Cyber Chase? Yes. Yeah, they were kept uh, on. They were referred to in-house as the Brain Trust. As, and I refer to this quadrilogy of films that they worked on as the Brain Trust quadrilogy. Yeah. That would be Zombie Island, Witch's Ghost, Alien Invaders, and Cyber Chase. That is correct. Yeah. Now, now, okay, here we go. Zombie Island, okay, <laughs> Zombie Island. It's like, do we do we even see the peak of that writing? No. Yeah, that that there's. That's pretty high. <laughs> that's pretty high. Uh, ghoul School. <laughs> ghoul School. Blue Brothers. Ghost Hollywood. Oh, no, we're... Yeah, goes all... Ah, oh, man, I can't even remember now. <laughs> I think you rated a Reluctant Werewolf over Goes Hollywood. I might have. I might have. Because I think we had more positives to say about I that. Yes, I think I probably... God damn it, please don't make me remember the disco song! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even try to. No! <laughs> I had flushed that from my memories. Thanks. Thank you for that. Uh, it's going to be stuck in my head for the next <laughs> few days now. God damn it. <laughs> Ghost Hollywood does things to you, man. It does shit, man. But, uh, yeah. But yeah. Zombie Island is way high up there. there it is unmatchable at this point. I don't not, know. Not, none of the other Scooby-Doo movies that I have seen have even come close. <laughs> no. And I'll say this. Uh... Even the few mo there's a few movies after Cyber Chase that are still really good. Just to, just to list off. God, I mean, uh, Legend of Vampire Rock. That one's okay. Uh, Legend of the Vampire. Yeah, Legend of the Vampire. That one's okay. That one's that one's okay. Mm, I have my opinions about it that we'll talk about at some point. I mean, it's not a great movie. I don't think it's I don't think it's anywhere close to the to the brain trust. <laughs> but uh nah. Uh Monster in Mexico is fucking dumb <laughs> in the best of ways. <laughs> yeah, that was really where I had to kind of dropped off with regards to my interest in Scooby Doo. Yeah and the movies. Dude, but man, mo like in a word, Monster of Mexico is so bad it's good. <laughs> it is one of those movies. It's not it's it is so much better than Reluctant Werewolf. Frank and Creepy is pretty good. You should check I, that one out. Um, the Loch Ness Monster, I remember enjoying that one. That one it was good. That one I enjoyed. Um, wow, what else was there? Chill Out was pretty chill good. Out, chill Out was the, best of the, was the best of the later movies. I really got to have you check out Frank and Creepy. That one is pretty, good, pretty damn good. Where's My Mummy is also amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Aloha Scooby-Doo is kind of dumb. Yeah. Uh, For context, uh, he was saying that uh, Where's My Mummy is good and Aloha is dumb. <laughs> just just in case the microphone wasn't picking that up. <laughs> um, uh, Pirates Ahoy, I remember that one. I remember not enjoying that one. Yeah, that one's not the it, best. <laughs> it does, however, it does have uh, Fred's parents. Which it is, does have Fred's parents. This is great. Uh, let's see some of the other ones. Ooh, Shaggy's Showdown. That one's a pretty good one. Is that the one where he? Uh, is that one the one where he uses ten percent of his power? No, that's Legend of the Phantasaur, which okay. is pretty entertaining, even beyond that meme scene. <laughs> no, Shaggy's Showdown is uh, that one's a pretty good one. Oh God, the WrestleMania ones are so <laughs> dumb. Special, especially the race one. Especially the race <laughs> one. Like it kind of made sense with the first wrestle WWE. Who are the one. teams again? <laughs> I I think it was uh, Sheamus and the 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 Gold Star Brothers, whatever. Oh, the Road Brothers. 
The Rhodes Brothers. Yeah, Dusty and Dustin. Yeah. That, there was Dusty Rhodes and... That, Un- mo- that movie was dedicated to Dusty. Yeah, there's there's Dusty Rhodes and The Undertaker, which makes zero sense. They were the two oldest in the in the movie. Yeah. By far, well, outside of Vince. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, a- actual wrestlers. Yeah. Vince Vince kind of became a wrestler eventually, at some point and then stopped. God, Vince. So anyway, recommendations. Um, okay. I guess we're at the recommendations point. Um, I mean, yeah. Oh, no, wait. What would you rate Zombie Island? Oh, did you? Eight. <laughs> eight. Eight? That is pretty low. For I would Scooby- give it a ten. For a Scooby-Doo movie, eight's, eight's just about right. I give it a ten. See, I don't rate it ten because, like, it's not the best movie. It's not, like, a great movie. For a Scooby-Doo movie, it's awesome. It's amazing. But as far as, like, other, uh, compared to other films that we have rated 10 out of 10, would you say this is equal to, like, The Thing? Or, like... Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay. You're, uh, you're, but that's just purely subjective. You're, you're weird then. And you're, you're, I am weird. And you, you're, you have a poopy face. Hey, the... hey, I told you not to talk about my condition publicly. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> So okay, so yeah, he he gave it a ten. I uh, gave it an eight. Eight eight's pretty fair. I, I would have expected you to give it a higher rating. Honestly, no, but. eight eight's eight's good. I don't think I don't think any Scooby Doo film is gonna get higher than an eight. Which uh, no eight eight and a half maybe. That that's kind of pushing it. Um. Okay, recommendations. You go ahead. Um, well, I haven't finished watching it yet, but I have been watching Mobile Suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans, which is uh, I hear pretty... That's good. That is really good. Keep it going. Is, the, Keep it, is a, it is a series in about child soldiers. You, you know how most Gundam shows are about like a teenager having to pilot a mobile suit and being the best at piloting the mobile suit? Well, this series is about child soldiers, literal child soldiers, in a futuristic, uh, post, somewhat post-apocalyptic world uh, that are basically trying to retake their importance, their significance, their their importance as human beings yeah, I hear it's in a good. really, really cruel society. And it is so fucking fantastic. I actually just this past weekend finished up the uh, Gunpla for the main mobile, the main Gundam, the Barbatos, and I'm 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 really wanting to get to the the Barbatos Lupus Rex. I want to get that and put that together because that looks fucking fantastic. I love I love the fact that uh, beam weaponry are almost non-existent in this series. Like, there are, like, only a handful of instances of beam weaponry, and they are devastating when you get to them. But I also really enjoy the fact that not every episode has mobile suit action, which you would think weird of a Gundam show. But a lot of a lot of the show is about the characters and the child soldiers and all that. Oh, it's fucking fantastic. Good, good talk. Oh yeah. Uh, Clock Tower: The First Fear, obviously my favorite game of all time, and that's not a joke. Yeah, I I said you could suck its cock earlier. Later, yeah. At this point, earlier um, in the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lu- Lucas and like everybody else I know knows like I fucking obsess <laughs> over Clock Tower. It's. Kind of justified. <laughs> kind of justified. It's a really, it is a really good, very early point-click survival horror that, game. There's two kinds of horror. Uh, well, there's there's three kinds of survival horror games. Or, you know, pre-Resident Evil, post-Resident Evil, and post-Resident Evil remake. If that makes sense, yes. So Neo Retro. So ne- so Neo Retro Resident Evil. Yes. There, there's there's. There's the early ones, like Alone in the Dark, which I count as a survival horror game. I'm pretty sure most would agree with you. Yep. Uh, what else would there be? Splatterhouse technically is a horror game. It's a horror game, but it's certainly it's horror not... horror a... action. It's horror action, but certainly not a survival Okay, pre-horror pre games. 
Yeah, pre-Resident Evil horror games, post-Resident Evil horror games, and post-remake horror games. So they're like 89... Sweet Home is a horror game. That one also was comes highly recommended. I would consider that a survival horror game. Yep. Since it does like the first survival. Being an RPG, it does require resource management. The, the first horror, survival horror game, I'd argue. Um... That's debatable, given. De 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 yeah, that's debatable, given the the one ma the one game where you're in a maze against a T Rex. But I was gonna say where time stood still, which Maybe. does have dinosaurs in it, but it's not in a maze. Um, yeah, it is uh, 1995, just the year before Resident <laughs> Evil came out. It came out in September of 95. Um, you play as a you play as a uh, you play as a teenager. Who's just been adopted along with side her friends. And they all go to a nice happy mansion and everybody lives happily ever after. In the good timeline. In the good timeline. <laughs> Unfortunately, this game doesn't take place in that. <laughs> nah. Nah. Scissor Man's great. Scissor Man's <laughs> such an iconic character. I fucking could talk I could talk forever and a day about Clock Tower and the series itself and how it just fell off a fucking cliff. After the second game, and it did fall off a fucking cliff. Which second game? Clock Tower or Clock Tower 2? Clock Tower 2, but not Clock Tower 2, The Struggle Within. So, for context, the first game is Clock Tower The First Sphere, which was originally yes. released on the Super Famicom under the title Clock Tower. Yes. Then there's Clock Tower for the PlayStation, which is just known as Clock Tower. Then there's Clock Tower 2, The Struggle Within. And then there's Clock Tower 3, which I, I want to... In Europe, confused a lot of fucking people. Because <laughs> they, they didn't get Clock Tower 2. <laughs> um, I, I briefly want to talk about Clock Tower 3 because I don't know when I'll get a chance to. Clock Tower 3 is very weird. The Clock very... Tower 3 start has an incredibly yes. fantastic start. Really scary, tense atmosphere... The horrible visuals and themes and then it just kind of goes off the rails and doesn't make any goddamn sense and is ridiculous I, like, like it starts off great and then it then it shits the bed i i think uh Der derek alexander happy video game nerd stop skeletons from fighting he puts it out he puts it very nicely it is a fucking crazy game that you just can't help but appreciate for just how insane it is. It's so crazy. It is so weird. One of these days we got to collaborate on a review of that game. God just, damn. Just to talk about how maybe late that movie, that game starts and then how hell, shitty it becomes. Hell, we could do a let's play of it. Probably, yeah. <laughs> like, like magical girls, dude. Magical girls. It makes sense in context. In context, it makes sense. But for a horror But game, by the time that the whole explanation behind it comes in, it just uh, fucking ridiculous. God, I love... Like, the more I talk about Clock Tower 3, the more I love the game. But, like, fuck. It's the last Clock Tower game, and it makes me sad that that, that was how, what the series went out on. Yeah, it's... Outside of Haunting Ground, which... Oh, it's man. really only a spiritual successor. It's a spiritual though. successor, but goddamn, is it a very uncomfortable game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know much about it. Uh, other than it's, that it has a girl and a dog. And it's just, I'm kind of okay with not knowing right now. Yes, okay. Let's, let's yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything, but yeah. it, it's, it gets pretty dark. Oh, I'm sure it does. Uh, but no, yeah, clock t so the way I refer to the games... First Fear, Clock Tower 2, Clock Tower Ghost Head, and Clock Tower 3. I mean, yeah, obviously. And then Haunting Ground, I usually sometimes refer to as, uh, as Clock Tower 4. Then there's there's a few other games that are very like Clock Tower Remothered. It's very... It's, I remember when Remothered was going to be a remake, a, a fan make of Cl the original Clock Tower, and then that fell through. That was... That was like ten years ago. That was over ten years ago, and I'm, I still remember seeing all the the, the beta footage of it. I, I on on the to getting back to the topic of the original Clock Tower. Yes, that is a fantastic and creepy and eerie game. 
On the Super Famicom. On the Super Nintendo, yeah. The Super... It... Oh. Never came out in America. No. But I'm... God damn it, if it did, I would have bought that shit. Yeah, I don't... I don't blame you. That was Hell, a I really, still... really well-made game. Clock that Tower... That fantastic. Clock Tower and Sweet Home were two games that were victims of their time. One was a movie tie, and the other one just wasn't... Really well, 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 well not done. only was Sweet Home a movie tie-in, spoiler alert, there's a movie called Sweet Home that's almost the exact same plot, but could you imagine what would have happened if that got ported to America? God damn, that thing would have been butchered to shit. Yeah, <laughs> especially given the time that it came out and Nintendo's whole censorship stance at the time. <sighs> like, that's probably the biggest reason why that game didn't come out in the U.S. They, they, yeah, they it had such horrific imagery for an NES game. And we're talking horrific imagery. <laughs> we're talking, like... Horrific imagery and themes, Just too. explicit. Just, like, in your face. We're not... We're not... We're, we're not, not shying away. <laughs> yeah, we're not pussing out of this. But it's not like... It's not like Alone in the Dark, where it's like, Oh, hey, you know... Just, it's implied. Uh, we're no, just... it's like oh, right in your face. This is the shit that happened. <laughs> yep. But uh, yeah, Clock Tower is also like that. First fear and uh, Clock Tower Two was all right. It's okay. I still like it. I, I think it's aged horribly, but I enjoy the hell out of Probably it. Probably one of the most memorable things about that is that in the instruction manual, it says that if you can complete the game without dying, you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jason Voorhees. Yeah. It says that! <laughs> I mean, is it wrong? Nope! <laughs> uh, yeah. Clock Tower 2 pun really is punishing when you fuck up. It's also very random. You never did finish your playthrough on your channel, did you? No, I didn't. I never, I never got around to replaying it. Surprise, surprise. Shocker, another Let's Play I've never finished. <laughs> Just like Metal Gear Solid 3. <laughs> um, I might restart 3 at some point. Yeah, go for it. It's... it's just, I've been on a Resident Evil kick. And that's all my stream has been. It's just like, all my streams have been. It's just Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2. Occasional Resident Evil 3, but mostly Resident Evil 2. <laughs> Can you tell I'm a Resident Evil fan? I couldn't. It was kind of, it was pretty subtle. Yeah, I'm I'm glad. To hear I'm a that. master of subtle. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we've. I think this has gone on long enough. Merry Christmas, everybody! For those wa re watching this on Christmas Day, and wait, this was a Christmas podcast. This was a Christmas podcast. Bye. Bye.